Why do you say God both can and will save all? Well, I guess uh, two reasons. Uh, one is uh, philosophical slash theological, and the other one would be uh, biblical. The universalist statements in the Bible are, are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Now, um, you know, I grew up in an evangelical church, went to an evangelical college, and we always had all sorts of ways of explaining that away. Later, I, I learned uh, Augustine's way of explaining it away, right? When God says, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to save everyone. What he really means is I'm going to save all different kinds of people, rich and poor, male and female, whatnot. And, you know, I used that uh, sort of ruse for a while. Um, but then as, as uh, you know, I don't know what the right term is, evangelical universalism or, you know, starting maybe 15 years ago, it just became more and more prevalent. I was uh, writing a book for uh, Cascade and uh, Robin Perry was my, uh, my editor. And, you know, I didn't know who Robin Perry was, but I thought it's always good to you know, know something about your editor. And so I picked up his book, uh, Evangelical Universalist. And I said, yeah, this is great. I guess I had read Van Balthasar's Dare We Hope That All Will Be Saved. But this was kind of the first time I saw someone, you know, a, combining universalism with uh, evangelicalism. And, you know, his arguments, as, you know, Van Balthasar's were, and, and uh, then it turned out my very first philosophy teacher was Tom Talbot uh, when he was young and I was very young. And so I decided to go on and read his book, too. And and, yeah, it just seemed, you know, and then I read, a, you know, a lot of the other ones. And so it just seems to me that on any honest reason, reading of the Bible with one proviso, which I'll mention in a minute, it, it seems to me obvious that, that the Bible teaches a kind of universalism. The proviso, of course, is free will. What, what you always hear in these discussions whenever I get it, but what about man's free will? What, a, you know, what if people won't accept God's love? What if they, you know, how many sermons did I hear as a kid growing up? You know, God offers this wonderful Christmas present to everyone, but unless you open it up, you don't, you don't get it. Uh, you don't get its benefits. There was always something we were supposed to do. And that, that we was interpreted, we are supposed to make this autonomous free choice. Later on, when I became a philosophy teacher, I, I learned to call it libertarian freedom, right? We were supposed to make this autonomous choice. And even an omnipotent God can't overrule your autonomous choice or else he'd turn you into puppets. And, you know, God doesn't want a relationship with a puppet. So God wants to save everyone. But in essence, for philosophical reasons, he can't because he created us with the free will. Well, you know, I, I was a philosophy teacher by trade. Um, and one of the standard things that you have to teach is different perspectives on free will. And, um, you know, for 15 years, I lived as this good libertarian in the philosophical sense. That is, freedom means autonomy. It means that you and God are in competition with each other. And so the only way that a human can really be free is if God voluntarily chooses to withdraw his power and open up a space for your freedom. You know, I told that story for a long, long time. But then for purely philosophical reasons, that story began to make less and less sense. If freedom means not caused, then how is that any different from capricious? 
you know, uh, where's this decision come from if it's totally uncaused, totally free, totally autonomous? Um, and that objection to libertarian freedom began to stick. And then as I become became much more historically oriented, uh, one of my uh, philosophical heroes was the French uh, Thomas Gilson. And he always said that the history of philosophy is to philosophers what the laboratory is to scientists. You, 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 you develop ideas and you don't know for a hundred years what all the implications of these are. So I started approaching uh, philosophy less as an analytic philosophy and more uh, doing some historical work. And, you know, fairly soon, and it became obvious that this notion of autonomous freedom, this is a pure modern invention. I suppose you can trace it back to Occam in the 14th century, but it really takes off in the Enlightenment. Well, to, to bring this to a conclusion, uh, as soon as you get, for philosophical reasons, as soon as you get rid of uh, autonomous freedom, libertarian freedom, as the only way to understand freedom, then the Bible opens up. You're free to read it for what it says. Just as in Adam all men died, so too all will be made alive. And it really does mean all. It doesn't mean all kinds of people or whatnot. It means all. All means all. Um, so, it, biblical and, and philosophical slash theological.